One of the approaches into town are people who are transitioning mainly off of interstate driving and going from a high-speed environment down into a 30 mile an hour more congested area. Wide road, uh, downhill, transition from the interstate, everything that encourages a higher speed, not a slower speed. We put some medians in the middle of the road and people slow down. I think we have a generation or two that has been uh, trained to think like old school highway engineers. I mean, I joke sometimes, I think everybody in town wants to be a truck driver because, you know, we have to have the really wide roads and uh, wide shoulders, huge turning radius. And then people wonder why they aren't comfortable being a pedestrian. If New Hampshire DOT had come to town to do our standard project, first off, we wouldn't have worried about pedestrians. Parking, mm, we're not too worried about that. That's an amenity. Sidewalks, yeah. We would have ripped the heart and soul out of the community. I've, I've often been accused of being a shameless promoter of Littleton, New Hampshire. And I am, because it's where I grew up. It hasn't changed much. It really has not. It's still a gorgeous village, has a special feel to it. When I was growing up, you had Profito's Market, you had the library. The only bank in town was right there as well. The post office, it's got a grandiose, wonderful post office, which it got by accident. It was supposed to be built in Littleton, Massachusetts, and it got built in Littleton, New Hampshire. It's beautiful. And it used to be a great gathering spot. Um, at least once a week, everybody would go to pick up packages, you know, that they'd missed during the week. And you'd see folks go into the post office, collect on the steps, talk to each other. And that's really one of the keys, is people move around in town. It's the center. It's the heart. Several years ago, we decided that we were going to rebuild Main Street. And we knew that we didn't want to just put down more pavement uh, in the same old way. Uh, our Main Street is a very busy Main Street, Main East-West thoroughfare in this part of northern New Hampshire. Uh, we're a small town, uh, we're on a river, we're on a hillside, so the topography doesn't allow a lot of uh, parallel streets and pass-throughs. So a lot of traffic is channeled on Main Street. We also have a lot of pedestrians on Main Street. Uh, it's a bustling shopping area, it continues to be stronger with that. So we have a lot of competing uses. We have through truck traffic, through car traffic, shoppers, pedestrians, and so we wanted to do something uh, different, enhance the safety, uh, enhance the comfort uh, of the street. The argument that we used to use is we're making a, a transportation investment. We're using transportation dollars. We've got to maximize that investment. It has to be good for 20 years. It has to move traffic through town as fast as possible and as much as possible. Does it? Isn't it for the pedestrians, the bicyclists, the people that live there, the businesses on Main Street that are wonderfully successful, that need the parking to survive? It's an investment in our future. We also really pulled in anybody who felt they had an interest. Uh, Main Street is the heart of the community. Uh, so uh, everybody in town has some, has some degree of connection to what's happening in downtown, and there's a real strong sense of ownership put people in places that they may have walked for 40 years and we sat them there for 30 minutes and said look around. Uh, and so the idea started bubbling up. The major change for us was trying some experiments. Government doesn't experiment. The expectation usually is you come up with an idea, it's fully hatched, and you just, and that's it. We took one of our large intersections uh, that had a very wide mouth and we had identified that there, it was uncomfortable being a pedestrian there. We wanted to see if we could narrow that. So for probably a couple hundred bucks worth of material, some temporary curbing and some wood chips, we narrowed it for a little while. We actually learned some things from it. And it was interesting, too, because normally when you make a change, you know, and what, what happens? You know, everybody attacks it. Where did that silly idea come from? And it was interesting to kind of, it was in, in somewhat disarming to people to come back and say, that's a really good point. You're right. It doesn't, it doesn't allow for parking there. Or wh maybe we didn't taper it the right way. Aren't you glad we didn't do it the old way where we designed, designed the plan, hung it up on the wall, held a hearing, did, decided we did, really didn't want to hear anything because it was the last possible day before we had to file the paperwork, build it, and then regret it for 30 years. So, and we had a better idea at the end. When we did that first experiment, people uh, were concerned that it was too narrow, vehicles were never going to be able to make the turn, how can I turn my truck around it, how do I turn my RV around it, yeah, I can't park for the movies anymore. 
On the other side, people said, wow, I finally feel comfortable crossing that street. It was really wide. We started hearing from uh, particularly some senior citizens who said, you know, I, I never liked being out there because I felt exposed for so long. We heard from people who said, I love the idea. I, I hope that you, you build that out there. So it was the wide, wide range of opinions, um, but, the, but everyone had an opinion. And they, and they were pretty passionate about it. So uh, it, it actually helped, I think, people become a little bit more aware of design and issues that they never consciously thought about before. One more experiment that we did uh, was back in angle parking. Another radical idea. We had the pictures and we showed why it, it could be safer because you're looking directly out when you leave. You're not looking through your vehicle. And again, kind of a foreign concept. People were very antsy about that. You know, we had the fear of, well, I'll just be backing into the neighbor's cars. So again, what we did is we did a demonstration. We took part of a municipal lot and we put up uh, about half a dozen back in angle spaces. And it, people just started using them. And uh, people generally liked it. And it was one of those that once they tried it, it wasn't foreign. And you know, people kind of ate their words and said, wow, that wasn't so bad. And I liked it a lot better getting out. Change is difficult. Change in northern New England can be very difficult sometimes. So uh, it, it, it's take, I, you know, I, I think we brought some more people on board and others are going to sit with their arms folded, stomping their feet no matter what we do. Absolutely, there's resistance. Um, there are folks who will say, liability. Oh my heavens, we're going to be sued. That's, that's a big resistance point. And it's not just the lawyers, it's also the engineers. And th I guess that's based in the fact that if you don't design for the maximum, then in fact, if anything happens, you're liable. Liability only means that you are reasonable, prudent, make cautious decisions, and document your thought process. Calling it and approaching it as an experiment rather than a done deal, final decision of government, uh, I, I think it lowered the anxiety level a little bit to try it. And the great thing is people loved it. There have been times when I've been, oh, I've got to go through Littleton because I'm going to Lancaster, when I'll start driving down Main Street and I'll say, oh, boy, they're having a sale at Cheddar's and I can get penny candy half off. And I'll stop. That's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, even if you're a through motorist. Taking that half an hour, 15 minutes, we're all too busy, we're all running too fast. So maybe if we stop for 15 minutes and go get some penny candy, maybe we've, um, we've kind of reduced our stress level and, and maybe we're going to enjoy the rest of the day more. Through traffic is important, but it can't be our primary motivation for what we do. And as a motorist is our primary motivation to get to every place that's our end destination just as fast and straight as we can. If it is, then um, to some degree, I guess, shame on us because we're not really enjoying what we're doing and the days and the hours we've been given.